you know, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. I do not owe you conversation. Let's also get that clear. We don't want to hear from you. Go. She said, well, I changed my mind. And she has that right. What is up, my beautiful people? And welcome back to my channel. I missed you guys. Um, I'm going to have a story time at the end if you're interested as to why I've been gone so long. If you care. If you're a returning person watching my videos. Um, but we are here for the final and tenth episode of the Encore self-titled the encore um and i said this in i think episode three was it three yeah i think it was episode three i said this exact same thing i know exactly what was gonna happen um but let's get into it so we have it's time for the final perform you know the performance they've been waiting for not really working towards but you know it's here and they're working hard these last few days like last couple of hours to ensure that everything is ready and they're still having where are we so it's two days let me back up it's two days until showtime and they're like rehearsing really hard you know trying to make sure everything is down packed the way they want it to be and of course Sheeta Sheeta Sita pops up and you know she's talking about how she also said herself like you know y'all started off with nine now y'all down to five and she, and I don't was that the third episode it was something about like this was uh what is the word like foreshadowed everybody wasn't gonna make it to the end they knew that it was an experiment to see like could they do it but they everybody didn't make it but um Sita has told them like all y'all ain't gonna make it to the end she said that and so the ladies are getting out of the house to do a dress rehearsal um and when they get there it's still ain't right none of the clothes that they picked for this performance like I think it was last episode where they said they was gonna have the dicky jumpsuits and the choir robes and uh like some type of outfit like all of that stuff they had planned out none of that stuff was actually there and so when they go talk to the stylist it's like you know what what is going on here and he says well things happened that were out of his control his designer quit or his designer is gone i'm not gonna say they quit he just said that they're gone and the outfits that they chose were pulled to go somewhere else and they're not there but he'll have everything fixed by tomorrow and i think tomorrow is the performance so it's just like if tomorrow is the day of the performance and they still don't know how they're going to move in these clothes to make sure that it's the clothes that they really want that's a big problem but you know i feel like this is also a uh, made up tv drama as well because it's just like whatever so then we have Pam and her confessional, like, sending out a love letter to all the ladies that left and talking about how much she missed them and they were needed here and telling them that they're appreciated and loved. And it's just like, they're not dead. That's all I want. Because it was like when Nivea left and they did like that montage, she didn't die. We don't need this overly dramatic bush. Y'all was not going to be in a group anyway. This is television. She ain't dead. Ain't none of these people dead. Who cares? Like, they decided not to stick around. Okay. Let's move forward. That thing, that really got on my nerves. I had to remember when I watched this. I'm just like, why, why am I looking at this? Like, okay, yeah, they left. That's the thing, though. They left. They're gone. You have other things to worry about now. Worry about yourself. You came in this house solo. Leave solo. Well, you left, period. So, nah. Pam get on my nerves. Ooh, Pam get on my nerves. As much as I love her. And I love Total. She get on my nerves. <laughs> so, they're on stage. And they're practicing. And another thing that got on my nerves. It wasn't like all of them said something. But it was really Keely. She was practicing. I mean, focusing too much on the noise. That the cheers were making like as they were practicing. So it's like these 
I don't know what were they, they are like kind of hard chairs, I guess that weren't going to be the folding chairs that they were going to be using for the, um, performance but every time they would move them they made noise so she was focusing solely on that but they had already said that those chairs that they were using were not the chairs that were going to be on stage so it's like if you have other chairs that people are promising you are not going to make noise and it's not going to be this problem why are you focusing so hard on the chairs that you're practicing with like get through the practice and move on she just spent so much time on the fact that these chairs were making noise and then like she got an attitude and walked off because she felt the way about Aaliyah talking to them like through the microphone while they were on stage. And I guess she didn't like her tone and like how she was saying stuff to them. So she walks off and it's just like, no, nope. nobody has time for this. Like, can we just get through this fake ass performance and y'all go home? Like the dramatics and walking off and being a diva, a fake diva, um, we don't need it. Um, and so they were still worrying about the clothes because at one point before they even got to the practice Shamari had got on FaceTime with Ron telling him like I'm about to leave too I'm about to tell y'all to not even come because we don't have any clothes and the clothes that they do have and the clothes that they're trying to give me are these little tiny short like my body is more exposed than anybody else and this is not what i agree to and this is not what i want to wear so i'm about to pack it up and leave myself and the thing that got on my nerves is because everybody is so like hung up on words and how they're used she said the same line that every other person who has left said i'm not a quitter but but it's like okay you feel like you're not a quitter but if you leave that makes you a quitter just like the rest of them they all swore that they weren't quitters but they left essentially quitting making them quitters so it's just like if you would have left that would have made you a quitter but you didn't you stayed all the way through you know congratulations Shamari but I want y'all to stop saying that like I'm not a quitter but it's like but if you quit something that makes you a quitter as much as you want to try to fight through it like oh I don't quit everything but it's like now you're adding other things to this very what am I trying to say like blanket statement like if you quit something that makes you a quitter of that thing but anyway um the twins come through they say they got a stylist that hooked them up she's fabulous she's fantastic all they got to do is call her boom bow that's how you fix that it's good and so they come through on their word the stylist show up everybody loves their clothes everybody's happy you know we got to say our prayer before we go perform and boom bow we good to go and so it's showtime <laughs> what was the the first song was the first song skeletons or birds are, no yeah i think it was skeletons anyway i loved i'm jamming i'm like yeah okay y'all look good on the stage i'm enjoying it like yeah okay and then i think it was like it had to be whatever the song was because you i'm too hung up on that pam like she not on the stage at first it's literally the four of them like with those chairs they groove and whatever and then pam like comes in and standing at the other side of the stage and she very much looks like a pimp gathering her her ladies i was just like pam pamela pam mm, mm. <laughs> just like pam Pam be trying so hard and she be playing in our faces but okay um and so like I said I love it I enjoyed the performance because that was basically the whole episode like shots of them performing all of the songs that they have and I enjoyed it but then we get to Pam's gospel song and I hate to keep calling it that because there's an actual song a name for the song but I just call it Pam's gospel song and it's like this in my notes it literally just says pam pam because that's all i have no words for pamela i don't know what this was 
it's like everything ain't everybody ain't gonna do the homegrown down south gospel growl you know shout and sing it ain't got to be all of that but it also ain't got to be this either it's a good song i'm not gonna lie to you but it's very much giving interracial congregation with a white pastor if that makes any sense but it makes sense in my mind like the, it's white people's music i said it. it's white people's music i don't care um <laughs> i have to laugh at myself because i literally made a note that says vocal coach fake wiping away tears because uh miss sentiment won nothing in them eyes won nothing on them cheeks honey um miss lady but she was just I'm like, what you what you wiping at? Like, your eyes ain't even misty. Like, they not teary-eyed, nothing. You just got dry eyes acting like you wiping away at something because of this gospel song. And I was like, see? And some, sometimes, it's just like, if the gospel music don't make you feel it, don't touch you. Mm. Anyway. Um, Keely was feeling herself. I had to think, um, think about the Keely was popping all across that stage. And I was here for it. I'm like she don't like being a part of groups but i think she's like performing she like dancing and it it looked good it looked like she was having fun and i i can appreciate that and i'll acknowledge that it looked like she had fun and i was like okay and so yeah like i said every song i enjoyed um because i listened to their ep honestly i would give the ep a 10 out of 10 like as far as grading it it's great i fell in love with all the songs that they did I still want to know what happened to that reggae song. Well, no, I don't. Because when they was doing it, I was like, y'all not reggae artists. So why are y'all doing a reggae song? So no, I don't. I don't care what happened to it. Y'all didn't do it. Good. Um, but I like every song. So it was a great performance. You know, watching them vibe with each other and perform across the stage and all that type of stuff. It don't look like anybody forgot any words or anything. Like they pulled it together at the end when they were supposed to, which is great um and so at the end they put up on the screen that after taping like that final episode pam quit the group as well and decided to pursue a gospel career and that's why i said i told you so because i said that that third episode when i was like she wanted to take ho out the song and she didn't she told Cosine and Elijah she ain't want to do no over sexual, ain't no gyrate, ain't nothing on her part. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with Pam being Christian, want to do gospel music, but that's not what this was. And she wasn't going to last very long and she should have left then and pursued her own thing. Because Pam wasn't really on the stage or she was just like off to the side, like kind of grooving, but giving very much salt from salt and pepper like i don't want to record these records no more like yeah i have these records in the tuck but i'm not performing these songs because that's not a part of my ministry anymore and you know it's like that's fine but just say that and get out the way that that was my only thing it's just like i i knew pam wasn't gonna be a part of this group anyway so it's like i don't understand why her ass was on uh live with shamari but they not knowing how to work IG ass. Um, talking about she still got some stuff going on with Blueprint and she can't wait to perform with them and all that type of stuff. It's like, girl, you knew that you was not a part of this shit and that's why you had to fucking say. Um, but anyway, that is the end of the encore. I do hope they come back with a season two. I hope it's more planned out with less people and people that actually make sense and please do not give us drama from episodes one to seven and then give us some bs the last three episodes like that was the worst thing and i also whew, i have a message for youtubers i want y'all to stop lying because I've seen a lot of people say, oh, they gave us all this drama. We wanted to see this and this and this and this. And it's like, especially from YouTubers that I love, like people that I love watching and love, like just hearing their opinion on things. Cause I don't watch a lot of television, no lie. But I just love to hear people talk about it. But it's like, when it's not a lot of stuff going on and they don't get the drama 
of people fighting and stuff, the first thing they say when they start recording, this episode was boring. It was a boring episode. Didn't nothing happen. So it's like, if y'all don't have people arguing, y'all be the main ones saying that the stuff is boring. So I feel like when Carlos came out with this show, he felt like it had to be drama almost from beginning to end. But you know, when people started leaving and there was nobody else to argue with and there was no drama to give. So that's where it fell off in the last three episodes. But yeah, y'all be the main one saying like episodes are boring and then nothing really happened and y'all didn't really care for the episodes and it's not gonna be long reviews for y'all to talk about anything. You know, like y'all be the problems. The problem. I said the problems. Y'all be the problem. So it's just like either you want drama or you don't. And I get, because I think it was Ashley, Ashley Miller. She made a great point. She was like, and if you're going to give us drama, know how to spread it out. Like, make it make sense. Let it be drama that makes sense. But I felt like the, like the drama made sense. But then it was just like, it stopped just like stopped and then nothing else made sense because it's just like everybody is fighting for this quote-unquote one thing but then nobody's actually seen it through and it was kind of like jumbled up and then you're editing pieces in that was from like four episodes ago because we see that this happened at that time but you're trying to weave it in to say that it happened then and these people still have on the same clothes and all that type of stuff so it's just like editing could be better and these are plot lines this stuff is you know some of it scripted it's just like if y'all gonna do that make it make sense um anyway that's all i got i hope you guys enjoyed my real late review and like i said at the end i'm sticking in the story time of where i've been if you care peace and blessings my beautiful people um i have been gone for what like two weeks something like that excuse me because um I got a net and this is like personal business but I'm gonna tell it anyway I got a real severe ear infection so I was in the hospital last weekend um oh well let me start with actual Wednesday night that the episode aired so that day at work like I had had is this my right ear yeah my right ear um it had been like ringing and like a little irritated so that day when I came home, I just laid down. I didn't do anything. I was like, I cannot, uh, you know, watch this show, take notes, and do a video. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. So the next day I went to work, it got even worse, but it was still just like a pain. I didn't feel like it was an ear infection. I just thought it was like an ear ache. Cause you know, the symptoms of ear ache is a ringing ear and like, it feels like it's thumping so those were the only symptoms I had so I was like okay I'm gonna get um some oil that sweet oil that you put in your ear and some cotton balls and just lay down and let that be that and I had Friday's my day like my one day off between my long I call it my long week because I work Saturday through Thursday and so Friday I got up it's it was still worse but I was still like putting oil in there I'm like and um it had got like swollen it was really red and i was just like okay i'm gonna thug it out you know whatever whatever but and that night we went to go see uh jennifer hudson in respect great movie by the way um still it got worse like by the end of the movie i um i'm sitting at the edge of my seat like in the theater like literally my leg is bouncing up and down that's how much pain i'm in and I text my boss that night like I can't make it tomorrow I'm so sorry um and unfortunately my position like I'm the only person that does my position besides one other person and with this being her weekend off I knew she wasn't gonna take it so I'm just like basically um there's nobody to fill my spot so when I have to call in it's kind of just like sorry not sorry because i'm the type of person and it's like nothing to brag about because fuck corporate america um but if i don't have to miss work i'm not going to so um 
I was like, you knew this was a real situation. So anyway, I still go to bed, take some Tylenol, still put an oil in there, and it's still just hurting. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, I can't do it. So Saturday morning, I get up, go to the hospital, literally there from 10 a.m. sitting in the ER. Um, I didn't, they told me I was being admitted because the ear note and throat, which it sounds crazy, but these were my two options. He said I could be admitted and see the ears, note, and throat doctor tomorrow or just take these antibiotics at home and then go into his office on Monday. I'm in severe pain. I'm not like I need somebody to see what's going on in there because they said like first of all it was swell like it was closed up like a fist. Um like they could bear like they couldn't even put anything in there without me screaming out in pain and like that like come on now you see my face my face is already fat I um and this was swollen so it's just like then I got the nerve to have a bump right here um so yeah like all of this is swollen um and I'm like I'm not leaving because then I wouldn't have like a doctor's note excusing me from work i'm like no i'm staying here i want this looked at i want to figure out like what's going on um because they were saying like some bones and stuff back here might be missing or like something inside my ear it was it was sounding real scary you know how doctors do they can talk you into feeling like you're gonna die and um so i was like no i'll stay here see him tomorrow so i can figure out like and they were talking about like possibly doing a precision. I'm like, oh my God, like what I thought was a simple earache turned into something like massive. So I was there through Sunday and then I tried to go back to work Monday cause they did discharge me cause it wasn't as severe as they were making it out to seem. Um, it was just a severe ear, ear infection. Um, but it wasn't like, I needed my ear worked on or nothing like that or possibly like stuff seeping into my brain like they told me it was a possibility that could be <sighs> I'm sorry I'm rambling but I was like I was really nervous because the way they kept saying it's a possibility of this possibility of that I thought I was out of here I ain't even gonna lie to you like damn I'm about to die um, <laughs> and so I went to work Monday still in a lot of pain like I did I got through breakfast I told my boss, I said, I can serve breakfast, but after that, I'm leaving. Um, and so, and I said corporate America, that is not corporate America. Um, anyway, so then Tuesday, I still didn't feel like, going. I'm like, I, I can't go in there like this. Like, I'm still in pain. I can't hear nothing. This, I said, no. And so I emailed my boss and I was just like, you know, I have over 200 hours of sick time at work. I'm like, I just can't, can I have the rest of the week off until the following Monday, which now would be tomorrow and I go back to work tomorrow. And at first uh, she was like, cause I didn't mention like how many hours I had. That's, that was her response. That's why I'm bringing it up. Cause when I emailed her and asked for the rest of the week off, she's like, oh, you have over 200 hours of sick time? Sure, no problem. I'm sorry you're in pain. I'll see you back on Monday. So I'm like, cool you know that that works out in my favor and so um when I was there Monday I had given her a copy of my discharge papers from the ER because that's all they gave me and um then she texted me like Tuesday at around 11 30 and was like you know I'm sorry but HR said that you would have to have a doctor's note if you want to use sick time um and what you gave us from the ER, that's not enough. And I'm like, that's literally all they gave me. But she's saying like, I literally have to have a doctor say I should be excused. And I'm just like, if I was literally in the ER Saturday and Sunday, why would I not be able to use sick time for that? And why is the dis discharge papers not enough? Cause on top of the discharge paper, it literally like says your name and the days you were there. But I guess just because it has a date on it doesn't mean anything. So I'm just like, fine, whatever. And I, um, this is Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I, uh, went to the ears, nose, and throat doctor 
after seeing him on Sunday, he told me to come to his office and they were going to um, drain some more of my ear out. And so I had to go to him and I'm like, this is my second time seeing this man. But I was like, can you please excuse me from these days? And, you know, I want to return to work on Monday. And thankfully, he was a nice man. Because it's been some times in the past where they're like, I don't feel like you should be missing that much. Right? It's just like, really? I've been in pain this whole time. But, you know, people get the line about pain and they swear nobody's ever in actual pain. You got to be damn near dead to feel pain. But real nice man. And he, you know, wrote me the note. And I've been excused this whole week getting better. Um, and on my last day, I guess I'm ready to go back to work because I just woke up today like doing a whole bunch of stuff. I finally washed my hair. I t I've been taking showers, but I took a shower. Um, I'm doing laundry.